Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Haven't seen me in about a week. I'll get into that a little later. But hey, first and foremost, we're fighting a Selene, an Unbound Knight Arrowell, and a Savior Aiden. So you know what? We'll say, fuck the bullshit, we go. And we're just going to straight up go in and we're going to see if we can cleave this team into Kingdom Come. Now, one thing that went wrong that we just straight up did not take account for is that this Selene is actually on the random EE where she gives herself stealth. So that puts a little bit of a hole in my uh, plan and my... Um, Ahmed gets absolutely um, fucked right there. Thankfully, she doesn't die. And now we're able to go in with our shiny brand new Lionheart Sermia. That's not fucking bad. That's actually some pretty decent damage considering. But either way, we've done one big hit. They've all taken one hell of a hit. Now let's go ahead and finish them off with one final attack from Briar Witch Asaria because she's been boosted by Ahmed, has an attack buff, and Shazam. Extra damage. Hooray. Next fight. So now we're fighting a Conqueror Lilius, a Zeo, which the Conqueror Lilius went before the Zeo. So like, yo, what the fuck kind of speed am I looking at right now? And then also an Apocalypse or Abbey. So right here, pretty much what I was expecting is correct. However, I made a small miscalculation and I thought Zeo did like reduce buff durations by one or some shit. But, like, hey, he just, like, straight up strips two buffs. So I was like, okay, cool. We're still okay because we got pushed back on strays. But we still have Moon Bunny. We can do an ahead, go ahead and do a cleanse. And now we'll go ahead and say, fuck this shit. Let's throw this A-Ravi out. And we did not fucking kill it. Probably the Vigor effect giving her a little bit more extra attack so we didn't completely full pin. And the fact that she was also on Proof of Valor. So then she was able to take a good bit of that hit. So now we're in a situation of, well, let's see if we can prevent uh, Zeo and Apocalypse Ravi and Conqueror Lilius from doing as much damage as humanly possible. Otherwise, we might very well be fucked. Because we have Rule with us just in case, like, any of the stray hits going into strays are going to just straight up kill him. Like this right here. Thankfully, it didn't do enough damage to actually kill but um we also happened to put the zeo asleep once and then we also straight up kill it there and then we were able to do an aoe attack with strays beforehand did a good bit of damage and then we we're able to s1 into the apocalypse ravi shazams now she's dead now good news is we have a sustain on our field hell we have fucking two of them we have a reviver we have strays we have a lot of dps and now we're only fighting a conqueror lilius remaining so whenever you're down to this particular situation uh this bitch can't do shit to you so why did we go with moon bunny pretty much essentially because of this right here because um that attack is complete and utter fucking bullshit and it needs to have like more fucking counterplay to it other than just moon bunny but either way, because we happen to give ourselves skill null and immunity for two turns, just any time those uh, extra turn shenanigans go off, we're able to do all kinds of fucking cool shit. So anyway, uh, yeah, that match is over. Let's move on. So now, um, uh, take a good solid look at it, folks, because you're probably not going to be seeing setups like this anytime soon. To those of you who know about the balance patch coming, you already fucking know. But basically, um, I see a whole bunch of pretty fucking barriers on that team. And my Oxlots just so happen to be faster than the Conqueror Lilius. I brought insurance because I had Ahmed with me as well, just in case she went first and then, you know, did her shit. Then I could have taken this opportunity to then, you know, bring up and then also cleanse the Aranka. Because quite literally, there's one threat on the field. That threat being Savior Aiden. Well, okay, um, seeing as how we're only dealing with a form of damage mitigation from Unbound Knight Arrowell and the fact that whenever Aranka goes into something with a barrier and does an absolute metric fucking shitload of damage, you ain't got really much to worry about it, son. So you just kind of go in, kill that bitch, and you're fucking done. <laughs> so what we wanted to do was we wanted to use Oxlots to give ourselves, you know, continuous attack buffs so that we could just keep going. Fortunately for us, the uh, Unbound Knight Arrow didn't really have a whole lot of defense, so straight up we were just able to one-tap her right there. And now all that's left is still another turn of barrier remaining on that uh, Conqueror Lilius. Yo, that bitch is dead too. We'll talk about Oxlots a little later. So... Here's another oh-so-wonderful fun matchup that you can do anytime you see a hawk on defense and you don't feel like speed checking it. So hey, uh, did you know that he always does S2 into S3 first on AI? So then that means that procs your moon bunny, which also means he'll go into a unit that's going to be skill nulled. So he essentially does fucking nothing. 
Now, sure, you're going to have, like, the situation of him having invincibility on himself, but then this still leaves you open with completely full HP and skill nulls on two other characters to go into whatever you fucking please. So, naturally, that's what we did. So we're going to use Benny Maru, go into the Mercedes, kill her once, do a fairly decent amount of damage to the Senya, and then, because we also had Moon Bunny's S3, we'll give ourselves attack buff, going on Hui Young, we will straight up annihilate that Senya, get used to seeing this now, because you're not going to be seeing it in the near future, because um, the Hui Young killing of uh, Senya is straight up not going to be happening in the future. Hooray! Don't you guys love balance patches? And with that being said, the uh, Zahawk is also dead. Hooray! We're just going through this shit lickety fucking split. So now, here is like the prime example of one of the best uses of Last Rider Crow that you could ever fucking use. So, we just so happen to get turn one because the whole team just so happens to be kind of slow. We'll go in with Last Rider Crow, do his shit. Now, here comes all of the retaliation in the form of a AoE attacks and single target DPS into your Last Rider Crow. So that's three turn cooldown reduction so far. Now here comes five turn cooldown reduction. Um, we're already set to go with another S3 from Last Rider Crow. Ain't that a fucking bitch? It's because after the first attack, we already did a fairly decent amount of damage here. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Make that seven, or make that six, whatever. I can't count. Either way, Last Rider Crow has taken so many additional hits that his, uh, his S3 is already off cooldown yet again. So whatever, fuck it. Throw that shit out there. Spec Tenny's open and free to be hit. Politus is already, like, you know, below half health. All you got left is Bellion, and this Bellion is not an injury Bellion. So because she's, um, not injury and she also is on counter, well, congratulations. You are straight up fucked, ma'am. Because every hit of these goes into her, results in a counter attack, and that's two turns of cooldown reduction for every single hit that that happens to your last Rider Crow. Congratulations. You fucking win. Hooray. It's only been 11 turns. And now, welcome to Unlimited Dual Attack Works. So we're going into a Destina, a Biblis, and also a uh, Mercedes, I believe it was. Yes, it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Sinful Angelica here with us because this is going to be our means of dealing with Mercedes for the sake of anti-revival as well as Destina because she is a revival unit. And I also brought Kitty Clarissa just in case the Biblis was really fast because that's what I was counting on. I was counting on her to be really fast and possibly if she hit with any negative debuffs on my Remnant Violet, then my Kitty Clarissa would have gone in, done a cleanse, and then we would have been good to go. Fortunately for us, we just so happen to be gear gapping, so we don't have to really worry about that. So, naturally, we go into the Mercedes with uh, next level fucking hyper nukes. She's dead, because we have Sinful Angelica on uh, Immortality, she ain't coming back, and Destina can't fucking revive. So now all you gotta do is we're just gonna go into Biblis here, and hey, looky there, Remnant Violet doing Remnant Violet things. So, because his focus is full, he happens to RNG go into Biblis one more time. Shazam! Now Biblis is dead. Now all we has left to do is we just have to kill the Destina. Well, we're already almost out of our dual attacks here, which is amazing because Sinful Angelica is going to give you two turns of guaranteed dual attacks, but we just so happen to lose our immortality now, and Destina gets her turn. So what that means is, even though we, quote, extincted them, we technically didn't, because all it does is prevent revival whenever you have immortality on your Sinful Angelica. And because whenever Destina brings shit back, it comes back at next to level, next to no fucking HP, we'll just go into them once, go into them twice, and then RNG attacking Destina right here into a devastating get the fuck out of my goddamn game. All right. what is our next and ladies and gentlemen, that's the Guild War. Ooh. So, to those of you who are probably wondering like where I was last week, um, I'm not really going to sugarcoat this or like wiggle my way out of it or anything. I just generally did not have a good week last week. Um... I guess you could say it was depression. Fuck, I don't know. Basically, I, uh, I kept having really, really bad matches. And the one thing in particular that I was really, really hyped for was I wanted to showcase um, my Lionheart Sermia pretty much all last week. And 
I just had no good opportunities to do it. She would never like actually function or I would be forcing it to result in like just a really, really shitty loss. And just, I just had really, really shitty Guild Wars all last week because I was trying to force shit. And then like, it also just affected my mentality. This was also like the end of the RTA season. And this RTA season was fucking abysmal. I really hope a lot of you guys were able to get to the places that you wanted just because you wanted that shitty Bellion skin, which I don't really care for Bellion. She looks like a Genshin Impact character now, so I, I don't really care. But uh, I was able to get to Masters. Thank fucking God. It was fucking atrocious. Easily one of the worst seasons that we've ever had. And like, yeah, right up here, you'll see my new uh, my new Lionheart Sermian. I'm very, very proud of this build. I'm very happy with it. I just wish I could find more places that I could really use it. Eh, whatever. I'm very, very happy with it. But like, yeah, that's basically the reason why there was no videos like all last week is like I was just like in a state of depression, mainly just because of how bad the RTA season was. And then also like, hey, shout outs to like New Year and like the balance patches that are coming out soon and how they're pretty much going to fucking destroy a lots. <laughs> and also like Huang Young is going to get like really, really weird as well. And I'm kind of debating if I even want to make a video on it. I kind of don't want to. Everybody else already is, and it's so mixed in terms of like who likes it, who doesn't. Quite frankly, I'm not a fan. But hey, guys, if you liked this video, go on ahead and leave a like. And if you want to see more of my content, hit subscribe. Ring, ring.